Air Postal here. Today we're taking a look at the Key 162 Mark III. This is a tier 10 Japanese fighter plane. Then we're going to compare it to the other tier 10 fighters and see is it even really worth it? Let's take a look. Good luck indeed. Oh, evil ash. It's the worst kind of ash. Um, we've got a BVP215 on the enemy team and F86. I am probably more maneuverable than an F86. Even specialized. Um, well, actually, that being said, that's not a possibility. That's not 100% possible now because of Elise Clark, right? So if he's got Elise Clark in his F-86, then I'm probably screwed. Once I get the Key 162 Mark III specialized, I'll have some more flexibility when it comes to maneuverability, which is really this plane's only trump card. But even that being said, a Yak-30 is going to be able to help So... a boy to do well you just gotta kind of play like you would a yak but go for things that you don't mind uh, going for with high health for right these 30 millimeter cannons can be super frustrating in a dogfight type situation which is a hundred percent why i'd rather have a f86 even if it's slightly less maneuverable simply because 30 millimeter cannons when you've only got two of them such a pain in the butt. Alright, Yak-19, I can now maneuver. Probably. Um, looks like our friend in the 1102 is going to go ahead and get that command and mining facility. There we go. Let's see if we can't come over here and a huge pain in the butt to the IL-40. Or really anything. We can try it. No, that stinks. Let's go ahead and get turned around here. See, at least we've got the ability to injure ground attackers pretty easily. I'm not trying to kill the um, IL 40. Ow. Mainly because I want to keep him in here. Of course, I'm going to get killed by the rear gunner here of freaking 1101. Pilot got uh, knocked out twice. Not good. Freaking Yak 19 is going to be inbound on me. Let's get out of this sector. On ridiculously low health. And for some reason I don't have pneumatic control assist. Why do I have pneumatic control assist? I've got a very good reason for not having engine pulling. I suspect that I have um whatever the heck this one's called. Come on. Emergency control system. Yeah, I remember. Um, I suspect I have that because this plane is so freaking fragile. What I would like now, though, is some health. Can I get some health? If you don't mind, thank you. Something like this is much easier for me to go after. Hunter, any of that kind of stuff. Of course, if I can get my cannons to actually hit, that would be helpful. There we go. I got two more multi rolls inbound on our position. There we go. Get these on target. Stay on target. Get this guy on no health. Roll. Then back. 
matter where I go? I'm gonna go over here. These are more of the types of planes I'm built for taking on. Not necessarily an XF-90, although I knocked out his engine, so he might be in some trouble here. He's definitely in some trouble if he's gonna try turning. What's funny is I haven't gotten my engine knocked out in this battle. Super weird, because, I mean, look at the engines. They, they consistently have issues with... Consistently have issues with staying intact. These engines tend to have all kinds of knockout ability. Dang it. Let's move along here. And Seahawks inbound. We should be able to. Handle this. Oh, yeah, especially if he's on like no health. Heading back to the center. Hmm. I could conceivably get myself a camel at this if I can get rid of the Problem is, do I have the airspeed to stick with this? I don't believe so. I can try anyway. Freaking multi roll inbound. All for a shiny metal that I don't need. <laughs> and I don't even get. The enemy is trying to capture the plant. Don't let them do it. Tilt down, boost on. Thanks for getting lots of crits. That's a good thing about 30mm cannons when you've got just two of them. What are you doing? Yak-19, you are way out of your altitude bracket, aren't you? Again, you're still out whatever it is, so who am I to tell you how to play the game? Freaking Seahawks, man. Why are Seahawks in such pains in the butts? Tap it a tap. There we go. We cannot support you any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Four. Go. All plans are under our control. Great job. Uh, those guys. Oh, I guess they are heading back to us. Kinda. I think we're out of time here anyway. Give the uh, old GGs. Ugh. Come on. Come at me. Don't even mind. The game's gonna be over soon anyway. I'm proud of you, pilots. Just a little bit more damage, please. Uh let's take a look at the uh, the second battle. Alright, taking our second battle here. We've got a specialized XF90 on the enemy team that we need to watch out for. As far as turn fighters is concerned, we've got the uh, Yak 19, which could, you know, be a pain in our butt, but we should be able to come out on top. I still have um, my emergency control system here instead of the pneumatic control assist. Again, the thought process is. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's I'm go. to get the freaking garrison. I thought I'm tempted to go here and then to the center and let my bots capture here and then get to the center. So at least we've got something coming in, but it happens when we trust the bots. Anyway, having the emergency control system, you saw how many times I got my wings and tail knocked out this, the, the first battle. And so my thought process is I'm still going to keep it in here. Luckily, I'm not going against anything too crazily turny. At least consistently. If I was going against a Yak 30, I'd be in trouble. A specialized F 86. Probably in trouble. You gotta assume you're in trouble. It's close, sir. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, you're turning. Okay. Don't mind if I do. You knocked out his engine. That's good. Again, the 30 millimeter cannons, you've got to take advantage of what they're good at, which is critical. Critical damage. Freaking bombers still bombing over here. Can I get up to that altitude? Shoot him off at the pass! Oh, never mind, we got the sector anyway. Nope. Ah, oh, you son of a cracker jack. Alright, I don't want to use my med kit if I don't need to use my med kit. So let's, um, let's figure out something else here. Tap, tap, tap. That I will try to get my wing and tail back back. Hello. Oh, frig a dig. Got my wings knocked out again. Gonna die to this yak. Yep. Hey, I finally got my engine back out. Seven. Still trying. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> yeah, that was the release of some pent up uh, ridiculousness. Can I get some wrench? Please, 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 please. That guy. Yes. While you're doing that, let's see if I can't go for the swift. A plane I significantly like more than the key 163. I mean 162. I don't know why it says 163. If it takes 163, that'd be like a comment, right? With a K, a comment. Um, let's head over to the corner. Alright, All right, let's see what we can do over here. Mm. Enemy bombers inbound. Don't let them reach their target. Dang it, what's he on? Like one health? Five health. Where'd all my bullets go? How am I not shooting this guy? Got to get this sector as quickly as possible. Tap it to tap. Whoa, almost got rammed by my own friendly. Calm down with the guns there, Postal. Cool. Flip it back over. Dig. There you go. Cool. Swift is definitely going to get away from us. Um, let's head to the center. Got air supremacy, really? Up 90, man. Playing around. Instead of taking me seriously. And I can't blame him. This plane is a little bit more of a meme than a meta. Keep it up. Victory is almost ours. Okay, man. Cool. Um, frig on my bum. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather. 
30 millimeter can is just burning up so quickly. Whew. I mean, not a wonderful game, but it, it shows you got to do what you got to do. And that's got nothing to do with the Key 162 Mark III. That's just got to do with the game in general, right? You've got to be flexible with your tactics. You've got to be flexible with what you have to do in any given moment at the game. And goodness knows you've got to leverage the freaking uh, WASD hacks as much as possible. All right, so in that first battle, we were able to get uh, 15 kills, 9 while defending, uh, 580 capture points, but that was mainly defending. Like I said, we only captured the two sectors. Just able to really leverage the fact that we had an 1102 capturing. I didn't run into the F-86 once, which is kind of weird. For that matter, I didn't run, run into Buffalo time either. So I don't know where they were at, but I didn't need to go find them to come out on top there. We were able to just kind of do our thing. And to be left alone when you're in this plane is all you can ask for. Where you can uh, dictate what you're doing, how high you're going, how low you're going, how fast you're going, and all that jazz. It is a very fragile aircraft. Let's take a look at the second battle. That second battle, we had 11 kills, three sectors captured, and yeah. I mean, it was pretty straightforward, right? You had to go directly across, capture the most important sector, which is one of the command centers, get to the center, get that taken, and then go capture their other command center. By being able to do that, we were able to set ourselves up for success. Even against somebody who was doing as well as this XF-90 was doing, we just simply out-captured him. He only captured one sector. And although he did 10,000 damage, he was clearly focused on, I'm going to assume, ground attackers and, yeah, bombers and, and heavy fighters. <laughs> four heavy fighters and three bombers so he's definitely doing the damage but he wasn't capturing the sectors and so we came in on top because of that so the key 162 mark three it's a plane it's honestly probably my least second least it's tied for my least favorite fighter <laughs> at tier 10 anyway it's not a bad plane it's just there's so many good planes at tier 10 as far as fighters are concerned but let's just take a look at it from a pure what this plane is meant to be kind of s standard. This is supposed to be a tier 10 turn fighter, right? You compare this to something like a Yak-30, clearly the Yak-30, which I do have specialized, of course, the Yak-30 has significantly better maneuverability. Once I have this plane specialized, I'm sure I'll have it very maneuverable, but not quite to Yak-30 maneuverability, and that's fine. It'll be a nice little niche. The airspeed, slightly going to be uh, faster than a yak 30 and the gun armament is going to be you know better than a yak 30 problem that you run into is that the gun armament itself yeah they hit hard but they're so fickle let's take a look at some other really turny tier 10 fighters at tier 10 you've also got the la-15 not quite yak 30 maneuverability but it's right there with a key 162. It's going to be slightly less maneuverable once I fully specialize the key 162. That being said, the airspeed's going to be better. It just is. The overall altitude performance is, is on par, but that airspeed makes a huge, huge difference. Furthermore, the LA-15 is significantly more robust. Constantly getting my my wings and tail knocked out on the key 162. Furthermore, I'm constantly getting my engine knocked out just only had it happen once in the last two battles. Last but not least is the, the F-86. So the F-86 yeah, is going to be slightly less maneuverable than a Ki-162, but only slight. Furthermore, the airspeed is just off the charts better with an F-86. The altitude performance, which is something I haven't even mentioned yet, is completely off the charts better in an F-86. And the survivability is just downright better. The issue that I have with the Ki-162 is its niche. It's turn fighter niche is kind of misleading. Two 30 millimeter cannons lead to taking out chunk damage versus heavy health pool type aircraft. So heavy fighters, ground attackers, bombers. Problem that you run into is heavy fighters and bombers don't typically hang down at low altitudes where the Ki-162 thrives. And the rear gunners of ground attackers, as you've seen, will completely tear you apart. Even non-specialized bot ground attackers and are knocking out my wings knocking out my pilot so it's not really a place where i'd feel comfortable being in a plane like this i'd much rather be in a j7w3 if i'm going to be playing that type of role at least i get bombs plus you get four 30 millimeter cannons instead of just two and they're better 30 millimeter cannons they completely melt ground attackers if you know anybody that's flown tier 9 and tier 10 ground attackers and they've got to go against the jawas they don't like it 
I don't like it when I'm in my ground attackers. It's not fun. All that for the plane is just kind of miscapped. If I'm going to have a plane that has two 30 millimeter cannons at tier 10, I'd much rather have the Swift. Yeah, the Swift has much worse maneuverability. Look at that airspeed though. Look how fast I can go. I've got reasonable altitude performance with the Swift. No, it's not MiG-15 or F-86 altitude, but it's, it's reasonable where I can stick with heavy fighters. I can do chunk damage versus bombers. A Swift and an uh, FW-252, the other plane uh, at tier 10 with two 30 millimeter cannons, has enough altitude and speed to harass the crap out of heavy fighters really you're an anti-heavy fighter fighter and you've got a very defined role and you're very good at that type of thing you can do chunk damage versus ground attackers and bombers because you have the, the survivability to take that on you can boom and zoom hit them and keep running not worrying about their rear gunners type of things and you can do boom and zoom tactics versus other fighters and some multi-role fighters too key 162 just doesn't have that flexibility you don't quite have that airspeed you definitely do not have a robust aircraft you can't take hits so where a plane like this is a turn fighter you'd rather have smaller caliber machine guns or smaller caliber cannons like the yak 30 has with its three 23 millimeter cannons like the, the la-15 has with those same three 23 millimeter cannons you know, or even machine guns in the f-86 these are going to be weapons that don't overheat very quickly or at least have a lot of consistency it's just something that i really do miss when i've got the key 162. so all these things put together make it so that this plane in particular just doesn't feel like it's what I would want with my end result plane. I've gone through all the the hard work and toil of grinding all the way through from tier 1 through tier 10. I want a plane that's going to feel, if not great, at least having its special niche. And I really feel like this is kind of a plane that's left out to dry. It doesn't have a special niche. There's various other planes that do a better job or are able to overlap what this particular plane does or just do a better job of what it's supposed to do. And so really, in my opinion, when you're going down the key line of the Japanese army fighters, really your best bet is once you've gotten to tier eight, you've probably got the, gotten all the best planes on this particular line. Once you get to tier nine and tier 10, it's not that they're bad planes, just temper your expectations. Tier eight with the key 94 Mark II actually has better altitude performance than the tier 10, you can believe that. Obviously it has less overall airspeed and marginally less maneuverability. Again, really weird to say that, but that's what it ends up being. So I feel like you peak at tier eight and then you take a, a pretty big drop off. It's not that you can't do well with the key 162 Mark I Mark and the key 162 Mark III. It's just there's typically better planes out there to do what you can do in this plane. And I'd love to hear your opinion on the key 162s, both tier 9 and tier 10. Am I completely out of left field? Is I not making any sense? Is there something that I'm missing? If I am, I'd love to hear your opinion on this plane and this line in general. Feel free to comment down below, or we can continue the conversation in my Discord, which is linked down below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.